Hey everyone, welcome to the video number 11 of this entire series on cryptography and this will definitely help you to uh, pass any kind of certification in cyber security. Specifically, we are covering it from a perspective of CISSP here. Now with that said, let's go and dive into understanding what is digital signature, right? So in real world, we do a lot of collaboration, right? We do a lot of agreements with people. Sometimes you also get, uh, you know, some kind of contracts done with uh, different parties. And what you do? You sign a particular document at the bottom, isn't it? You sign it. This particular signature is called as what? It is called a signature. What is the outcome of this particular signature? One thing is for sure that I can tell you uh, that this particular person has signed it. So later on, this particular person cannot say that I have not digitally signed this particular message. That is what happens in the real world. Now, how do we replicate the same thing in a digital world? Okay, so when we have to sign some document or any kind of let's say transaction or a particular document in the digital world, then the particular signature we use is called as digital signature okay very very simple so in those sense let's try to understand what a digital signature first and foremost uh, gives us why at all we should be using a digital signature in the first place so let's talk about use of the digital signature number one it gives us authentication or you can say authenticity of origin. For example, you are sending me a message and if you have digitally signed a particular message, I can come to know, okay, this has been, uh, you know, being sent by Sagar. So this particular message itself will, will indirectly tell me it is coming from Sagar. The second thing we, op we use digital signature for is, is for integrity of the message. <coughs> integrity of the message wonderful so obviously because it contains hash so we can also check the integrity of the message now what kind of message integrity it is it can be a document it can be a transaction anything then the next use of digital signature or you can say advantage of digital signature is it also provides you known repudiation So a digital signature provides you uh, authenticity of origin. It also provides you integrity as well. It also provides you known repudiation. But does a digital signature provides you confidentiality? Answer is no. A digital signature does not provide you confidentiality. You should be super clear about this particular concept because they may try to validate you in the exam, right? So second pointer is, yes, I do understand now digital signature, okay, what are the main usage, what security goals we can achieve by using digital signature, but then uh, is there some dependency as well? And answer is yes. If you want to send a, uh, you know, digitally signed message to me, what you need? You need a very primary component which is called as PKI, public key infrastructure. Because this entire digital signature is based on asymmetric cryptography. Asymmetric cryptography. Okay. Now, asymmetric cryptography sometimes do not get confused. It is also sometimes called as public key cryptography. I am just telling you another words also because sometimes they are using alternate terms in exam. So be clear about this. Asymmetric cryptography is also called as public key cryptography as well. Okay. Now, how does this entire digital signature actually works in? Let's say Mr. A has a particular message and he wants to digitally sign this particular message. So what this guy will do as number one step? 
he will take this particular message and he will pass it through a hashing algorithm what will be the outcome outcome will be a message digest that's your step number one and that is very common we do that all the time the only difference which is very special here is they doesn't stop here they go a step further what they will do they will let this message digest go through an encryption algorithm encryption so first they hashed here they hashed the message then whatever the outcome of the hash function we are going to encrypt it now when we do encryption this particular encryption is not symmetric encryption this is asymmetric encryption it is based uh, it is this encryption is based of an asymmetric cryptography and when we say asymmetric cryptography we know we use two type of keys right in asymmetric which particular key is used to sign this particular message this particular uh, item the key which we use is the private key private key but private key of whom is it of mr a or mr b to whom we have to send no it is always mr a it is always and always mr a for example i want to send you a digital digitally signed message i have to sign it by my own private key because in a real world also when you sign a particular document and you put your signature do you put anybody else signature and say this is signature of mine you don't do that right it is your signature only so your encryption the the your encryption key is nothing but your signature so this entire encryption thing is what we are saying sign signing means encryption here when we sign anything by private key it is called as sign please remember this particular phrase when we encrypt something using the private key it is called as sign what we will do the outcome of we first did hash second thing we encrypted and then the outcome of this is called as digital signature this is called as digital signature this is the entire concept of digital signature then what this guy will do as we normally do this guy will take the message it will also attach the digital signature along with that it will pack it and send to the other party to the b right b will again the same process he will take uh, the particular uh, digital uh, signature but this digital signature he will not be able to open it he will not be able to get the message digest out of it why because this is already encrypted and if this is encrypted we need a decryption key and which decryption key it has been encrypted by mr a private key right this one so we need a's public key to decrypt it once we decrypt it the particular person will get the message digest and then same thing happens he will take the message let it pass through the hashing algorithm generate another message digest of his own and then compare this with this simple as normally any time happens in hashing so this is the entire concept of digital signature right now we will go a step further so i hope guys you understand the entire concept of digital signature now one more thing and very important i told you a digital signature gives you authenticity it gives you integrity it gives you non repudiation what it doesn't give you is called as confidentiality when somebody is sending this entire digitally uh, digitally signed message right anybody can go and modify the entire thing because it is nowhere we have spoken about confidentiality here until now so whenever mr a is going to send a digitally signed message it has to be encrypted first and then then sent to the other party b so you should never be sending a digital certificate which is not encrypted okay that's the base concept 
Now, in real world, whenever we use digital uh, signatures, what all different algorithms we normally use? Either we use RSA or we use DSA, right? D DSA is digital signature algorithm. These are the very, very common ones. But nowadays, even ECC has started being used because this is much more lightweight and it can also be much better for devices who have a very low uh, processing capability as well. So, we also start using it. Okay. Now, this entire because this entire digital signature concept is based on what? It is completely based on PKI. Right? And in PKI, we talk about digital certificates as well. If a particular digital certificate is expired, can we do digital signing? Can we validate a particular digital signature? No, we cannot. So, you need to take it as another concept. Along with this, we also use time stamping in the entire digital signature, which gives you an additional level of security against replay attack and those kind of things. Okay. And another concept is digital signature we use across the world in different countries. Sometimes different countries have different requirement when we use this particular digital signature. For example, a signed document validity in one country might be different in another country. Let us say it is in the physical form and the, uh, a particular signed message has a validity let us say of 20 years. So, the digital signature also will only be valid for 20 years. But in some other country, this validity may even be more. Can happen, right? So, that way also, whenever you are using digital signature, you have to be also considerate of, uh, okay, uh, in which particular reason we are using it. What can be the standard of it? In many countries, they have very different standards of using the digital signature also. They will say, okay, only this algorithm has to be used and all of those kind of stuff. Right? So, that you have to be little careful. But yeah, digital signature is a prime way to actually trust, uh, let us say, uh, emails, uh, messages, agreements on all of that. It is getting more and more popular nowadays. Okay? With that said, guys, I am going to see you in the next video.